The AstraZeneca trial called Jupiter that tested whether Crestor can help lower cardiovascular adverse events in patients with normal cholesterol received tremendously positive press. The results were billed as, quote, a 50% reduction of cardiac events. Since the patients had normal cholesterol levels, some have jokingly wondered whether statins should be put in the water like fluoride. But the Jupiter trial had several significant weaknesses in design, and the critics have started to point out the limitations of the data. One of the most respected authorities on the matter is Dr. Gordon Guyatt from McMaster University. Dr. Guyatt has pointed out that the trial results were skewed in a favorable light because the trial was stopped early. He has also analyzed the cardiac death rates that were not published and determined that there was, in fact, no reduction in death caused by the heart-related events. We interviewed Dr. Guyatt about these issues. Well, um, my approach to the ethics of stopping early are that it's ethically problematic because it, t it runs this substantial risk of overestimating treatment effects and then spurious, inaccurate estimates of treatment effect are widely disseminated and people are making decisions on what is an essentially inaccurate uh, overestimates of treatment effect. So personally, uh, I have no problems with uh, continuing trials to their interpretation so that what we disseminate to the worldwide community are more accurate assessments of the, uh, the effect of our treatments. In Jupiter, uh, there would be particular arguments for having it acceptable to continue, and one is that the absolute benefits were really very small, and second, uh, that concerns have been raised by the people who conducted the study about looking at long-term toxicity and the uh, ability to look at long-term toxicity is clearly compromised by stopping early. The cardiovascular death rate, uh, the effect, the apparent beneficial effect was substantially smaller with a 20% as opposed to around 45% uh, uh, relative risk reduction uh, and the individual and that and with quite wide, con relatively small number of events, relatively wide confidence intervals that were not significant. Well, as it turns out, um, the investigators have told me that uh, what they did was to uh, use an extremely high threshold for calling something a cardiovascular event. In other words, a cardiovascular death. In other words, it is a judgment call whether a death is cardiovascular or not. So they used a high threshold and the principal investigator told me this led to some concern about the usefulness or the meaningfulness of the particular endpoint uh, and that is what led them, uh, as I understand it from talking to the principal investigator, to not report that. The, the, uh, I think it is potentially extremely misleading. We know from the way people interpret things, it is potentially, it, it is extremely misleading to present simply relative risk reductions. Um, the absolute risk reductions are very small, even if you were to use the composite, um, and even if you were to believe their uh, relative risk reductions, and there's problems with the composite, as I've described, and there's problems with a uh, likely overestimate as a result of stopping early of the relative risk reduction. But even if you uh, believe it, you're, you're treating approximately 200 people for a year to prevent a single event. So the a absolute risk reductions in the course of a year that somebody might expect, even accepting the composite and accepting the relative risk reduction, are in the order of uh, just over half a percent per year in absolute terms. Well, personally, what it tells us is, to me, it confirms what appeared to be the case from uh, previous trials, that it really doesn't matter very much what your cholesterol is, um, that if you reduce and your, and your low-density lipoprotein, if you reduce it, you are going to get a reduction in cardiovascular events. 
um, and the issue as, and uh, that's basically what we, more or less what we knew before, this extends it, this makes us more confident about it, but then it leaves us exactly where we were before, which is the issue is how high does your risk have to be before you as an individual are willing to take these drugs over the long term. In other words, you're going to get some reduction in your uh, for instance, in your heart attacks by taking statins, uh, but uh, if your risk is very, very low, do you really want to have the expense, hassle, time, potential side effects for a very small absolute benefit?